Welcome back to our How to Play series for As Far as the Eye, where we are giving you a basic tutorial to give you that information that you need to jump right into the game, start having fun, make your way to the eye, and avoid the oncoming flood. We've already covered how to start the game by picking your tribe and journeying along a map. We've covered how to construct buildings, how to interact with them, and how to harvest resources. Now we're covering very special tiles tiles that you're going to be interacting with, as well as vagaries, which I'll explain at the end of the video. To start, something has wandered into our map. This is a friendly caravan. We can take one of our pupils and right-click on them to go meet this group. From there, we will generate a menu. This menu will show us a few things. Now, we could lose 50 rations in this case to gain 125 wool. Or we could gain a population by spending 200 stone and 200 ore. The last is we can gain a set of parchments, which are ultimately our research in order to just receive free help. And we see that we now have 400 knowledge points where before we had zero. This is one of the best ways to get help. Unfortunately, once we've selected our option, we can no longer select the other options, and that's going to be something that you see is quite consistent with each of these spaces. Now, the next is that we are going to go and explore these remains. And as we explore the remains, we're going to receive positives or negatives based on what we find. Something to keep in mind, Remains are different from sacred sites. You can identify what a remains is by hovering over the unique tile and seeing the remains text. Do note that if you have a druid level 1 or a druid level 2 or above, you'll be able to perform unique functions on these sites. And we'll talk a little bit more about druids and the other unique classes for our pupils later. For now though, we're going to hover over these sacred sites and note that we can explore them to retrieve or exchange resources. We can also send an herbalist or druid to analyze the sacred site to know its effects by doing the same. Let's go ahead and select our pupil now and set to explore. Once we go on to a sacred site, we have an option very similar to our friendly caravan. With the Friendly Caravan, we have three options, and with our Sacred Sites, we have three options. We have Prey, which will grant us a small portion of resources. Plunder, which will give us a large portion of resources, but some unknown negative effect. Or we can make an offering to give up resources in exchange for an unknown blessing. If you want to play it safe and easy, select Prey. Go a little bit risky, you can Plunder. But if you want to receive some unique blessing, then you can do offering. And remember, if you have a druid, you may be able to find out exactly what is going to occur. And now I want to talk about vagaries, the unique events which occur throughout the game, which will affect what your pupils should be doing and give consequences if you don't heed them. They'll either be notifying you that they will occur at a certain turn, or over a duration of the next few turns. When they appear, they look like a purple circle next to your caravan sign here in the bottom right-hand corner. And we see damaged path in six turns. The objectives must be met to leave the halt are 20% more important in that turn. They could also damage you, damage your buildings, cause penalties to gathering resources and a number of other things. There are ways in the council to be better prepared for dealing with vagaries. If you ignore the vagaries, then what can happen is you can absolutely run out of everything you need. Our resource for rations has run out. We have no alternative food source, so our characters have grown ill. We can tell that both by looking at the map as well as their health bar. Now, they are going to be sick, and we're going to demonstrate exactly what happens. So you see, they've grown ill, they've died, and now our game is over.
but where one game ends, a new one can begin, and we're going to come back next time explaining pupil traits, how pupils level up through the use of experience, and how your whole settle and how your whole settlement can gain new capabilities through the use of knowledge. So make sure you stay subscribed if you want to get these videos as they come out. In the meantime, if you've enjoyed this, consider liking, sharing, or commenting below. I am Nidanoski, and as always, have fun.